the gospel reading that we just heard, we have a lesson on the spiritual problem of wealth. Now today, we also celebrate the memory of one of the great desert fathers, St. Piman the Great. And clearly the desert fathers lived lives of great simplicity. In fact, last night at Vespers, we heard the Synaxarian, the reading about St. Piman's life, and he, there, was a, there was a quote that simply said, it was about food, but it was like we were just we just had what we had, and we were happy with what we had, and that was that, and we were all at peace with each other. But of course, that kind of life is not a calling for all of us. We don't all live in monasteries. We don't all live in the desert. We live in the world. We have families. We have jobs and other kinds of responsibilities. So what do we do with the the whole issue of wealth. I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago about the house churches that are mentioned in the New Testament. That these house churches were, were homes that were donated by wealthy Christians for the use in the church for worship. So obviously if, if we had wealthy Christians uh, in the early church, they had to have an understanding of a proper relationship with wealth. But then we have in the Gospels this warning about an improper relationship with wealth as well. So what's the difference then between being financially responsible, being good stewards of our material things, and the kind of love of money that, is, uh, that we read about in today's Gospel with this young man who walked away from Christ because he had many possessions and couldn't bear to hear what Jesus said to him, sell all of your things and follow me. This Tuesday, we're doing our final book in our summer reading series. It's Frederica Matthews Green's book, The Illumined Heart, and she actually talks about this in her book. And she says, the persistent theme in early Christian writings is that money should be handled with detachment. Money should be handled with detachment. Because the problem with wealth, the spiritual problem of wealth, is that we attach too much importance to money, or by extension to possessions. We place them far too high in the hierarchy of values in our lives. <laughs> the spiritual problem of money has to do with how we attach value to ourselves based on money. So a person says, I have a lot of money, therefore I have value. Or a person can say, I don't have a lot of money, therefore I don't have value. See, those are two sides of the same coin. That money, wealth, possessions can be as much a spiritual problem for somebody who is destitute as it can for somebody who is wealthy. Because it's not the actual stuff for themselves, but it's our relationship with them. And it centers on the whole point of attaching personal value to what we have. If I have stuff, I have value. If I don't have stuff, I have no value. When we do this, when we place money or possessions at that place of being the thing that is the marker of my value, what we are doing is we are displacing the only one who really gives value to our lives, and that's God. We are placing money and, and possessions, material things, above God. Therefore, it is the problem of making these things an idol. That's the spiritual problem with money, is when we look at these things and assume that these things are the markers of real value in people. So yes, we do have to be responsible with money and with our material things in general. We have to be able to make ends meet. It's good to have a rainy day fund. It's good to plan for the future. It's very good to give to the needy. And giving to your church is a good thing too. So we have to be able to do these things. 
But we cannot allow, and please pay attention, the word is allow, because it's our choice. We cannot allow material status, possessions, money, and the rest of it, or frankly anything in this world, to take the place of the only one who has the legitimate authority to give our lives meaning and value. And that's the one who made us. That's the one who sustains us in our lives. And that's the one who has given us the way for going home to Him. And we all know that ruminating about material things does not help us at all along that way. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, Christ says. That's got to be the first thing. Our real value is found in Christ. And our real treasure is having Him sitting on the throne of our hearts. That's the real treasure. And to Him, and to His un unoriginate Father, and to His all-holy, good and life-creating Spirit, be all glory, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen.